hello hello everyone my name is Laura and this is my channel Laura's Little Library and welcome to today's video which is my May wrap up. So in the month of May I read 21 books. Yeah. It's going to be a long list. Uh, I will say six of them were manga, which makes it a lot easier. So then I have 15, like, novels to talk about this month. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started then. First up, I have Curse of the Specter Queen by Jenny Elder Moke. And this I hyped up for myself so much, but in the end, it was only a three star. So I was super excited about this book. It's a 1920s gender swapped Indiana Jones with Celtic mythology. And I love every aspect about that. I love that it's historical. I love that it's Indiana Jones type, so like treasure hunt. I love that it's Celtic mythology. Like that is a huge passion that I have. I love that it's gender swapped. So we, the Indiana Jones character is female. Our main character is female. But I ended up being very disappointed in this book. And again, a lot of that is because I hyped it up for myself, so that is partially my fault. I still think it's a good book. Like, it's three out of five star. I think it was good. I think it was fine. She's got another book coming out later this year, Rise of the Snake Goddess, and I plan on reading it because I'm hoping that as she publishes more books, her writing will get better. I loved the characters. The characters I did not have an issue with. Our main character, Sam, was really fun to read from. She's a little more introverted and not necessarily this big extroverted adventurer. That's her friend Joanna and their brother uh, who is the love interest and so I very much enjoyed the characters. However, I felt the pacing of this book was completely backwards. <laughs> I felt the beginning was very slow and it kind of had a really good build up. Like I didn't mind that it was slow. It took me a little bit to get through but I just kept getting more and more excited about what was going to happen. But then the actual Indiana Jones treasure hunt like solving the clues going from place to place happened in like the last 40 pages of the book it was super rushed it seemed way too easy it was not very well thought out uh, there was very little description I was confused on what was going on like were they going somewhere were they not what did the land look like it just it was a very disappointing end and then you had your little mythological fight at the very very end which again could have been really cool but because I was already disappointed at the middle of the book what should have been the middle was actually the ending I was just kind of done and just wanted to get the book read so I'm hoping that in her next book it'll be a little more balanced of build up to the actual content of the book that I was excited for but and then I read five dark fates two dark crowns that's that's so I read Five Dark Fates and Two Dark Crowns by Kendari Blake. These were books three and four of the um, Three Dark Crowns series. Um, so I rated Five Dark Fates, or sorry, that's number four. So I rated Two Dark Reigns, uh, three out of five stars. I just, there, I didn't have much to say about it. Like, I liked it, it was fine, the story continued. There's another book, so I'm going to read it, and the story wasn't over, but I just felt like not a lot happened, and it kind of had, like, that middle of the series book syndrome of just, like, it's a continuation, not much really happened, but you can't continue without it, and, like, it was fine. It was well written, you know, it was a three out of five stars, it was average. And then the final book in the series, Five Dark Fates, I also gave three out of five stars. Uh, there was Queer Rep in the fourth one, which was nice to see and I thought it was a very interesting approach to it but it's like oh I would have loved that a little bit earlier in the book because it's with the character that we know for the entire series and I wish there was a little bit more in the beginning but that's just me um nothing to knock a star off or anything dramatic like that I just was sitting there waiting for the big ending battle to happen like I I almost wish I could have just skipped the end to read the end of the battle, see how it ends, and then be done with it. Like, the first half of the book just kind of 
No, again, not much interesting happened. You know, it was kind of like what happened with Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo, where the second book was just super slow, super boring, nothing happened until the very end. It kind of felt like that kind of pacing. So there, there was a lot of point of view switching, and it was really hard to keep track of, and it just got to be too much. And that was something I was struggling with in the series before. It was harder to keep track of it in this fourth book. It was a little bit easier in previous books, but still, that was just way too many POVs. Just way too many. Yeah, there was just a lot. It was just kind of a lot. Uh, I still very much like this series. I don't know if I'll buy the books, but I, the thing is is that I loved the first one, and the second one was good. It was just third and fourth that just kind of mellowed out to be okay. So we'll see what happens with that. And then I also read Magic Lessons. This is by Alice Hoffman, and it's book one in the Practical Magic series. This felt like a prequel to something that I wasn't quite sure of, but or maybe there is a prequel, I'm not super sure. Um, I rated this 2 out of 5 stars. It was not necessarily one of my favorite books. So it's historical fiction, it takes place kind of during Salem witch trials, and we do follow a witch she moves from England to the States to Salem, Massachusetts. This one, it, gave, it felt very much like 10,000 Doors of January, which if you've been on my channel, you know that I loved that book. It had that similar style of storytelling, but I don't think it quite pulled it off because I didn't like the story as much as I thought I would. I will say, I loved that there were different like recipes and meanings and educations about witchcraft in the book, and that was a really fun like way to break it up and to read with, but it, it re-explains the same thing multiple times. And it does that with multiple things, where it's like, so here's something to know, here's the mini explanation behind it, and then a couple pages later, here, here's the same thing that I just told you, and I'm going to explain it again. And it does that a couple times, so it got a little repetitive in the writing, and it just really took me out of the story. There were these weird, like, history lessons within it, which I wouldn't have minded, but again, it was repeated, and so it just made me feel like I was dumb, even though, like, that's not at all what it was going for. Um, yeah, it just kind of had like a slice of life style, which wasn't bad, but again, there was just kind of no plot, nothing really for me to follow. I wasn't super intrigued on what was happening with our characters, and it kind of, it went from one generation to the other, but it was still focused on the first generation, but it wasn't super clear, and yeah, it just, it was not my cup of tea. Uh, two out of five stars, you know, I might not recommend it, but it is what it is. I also read Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I, this is weird. I need to hold it on this side of me. I don't know why. Uh, and I loved this one. This was a five out of five stars. I loved Elizabeth Lim's other duology, and I love this one so far. The second one, The Dragon's Promise, will be coming out soon, which is super exciting. Um, it's nice and fast-paced. I really liked the main character a lot. I loved how she used her magic. I love her personality. I love the way the plot affected our main character. So this is based off of Chinese mythology, but oh, I just love how just how it all played out, how the mythology played into things, but how it was not modernized because it's still like it's a fantasy world, but I just I loved it so much. I loved the magic system. I love like the mystery, the twists and turns that happen. Like you're adventuring and then something happens and you're like, oh crap, now what are you gonna do? Oh, it was so good. The twist ending. I'm so ready for the second book. I swear though, if it's a love triangle, I'm going to be very upset. But only the second book will tell. But oh well. Like it had a it had a good cliffhanger ending, and so I cannot wait for the next book to come out. The writing was beautiful, the characters were amazing, the world building was great. Oh, there's just so much goodness and richness here and it was all beautiful. Like it matches the beauty of the cover. And then shortly after I read The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie Oh and this is a story based off of Korean mythology where our main character sacrifices herself so that her brother's girlfriend doesn't have to be sacrificed to the sea god to try and wake him to stop all the terrible storms that are happening on her, at her village and 
her land and whatnot. Lo and behold, only to find out that the sea god is not angry, but that he is actually asleep, so she must travel through the spirit world to figure out how to wake him up. And I enjoyed this book. I get, I'm like 3.5, 4 out of 5 stars. Like, I didn't, I didn't love it as much as I thought I would and as much as maybe other people are loving it, but it's still a very good book. Like, it's still probably 4 out of 5 stars for me. I just think, like, it, it got my emotions going a little bit, um, but I felt like there was a little bit of a disconnect between the author and me as a reader. Like, it's, it's beautiful, but the story doesn't, just doesn't quite flow in the way that I, I thought it would, just with the beautiful writing, but then I would sit there and I'd be like, but that doesn't quite make sense. How are you connecting this and this together? Like. Like, I just didn't, it didn't flow as easily, and it wasn't quite as easy for me to read, not because it was artistic, but just like, we'd be in one place, and then all of a sudden we're at another, or maybe it's the same place, just called something different. I don't know. I just had a couple struggle moments. And it does feel a little watered down. I don't know if that pun was intended. I could not tell you if the pun was intended or not. But like it's it's just not quite as rich as it could be and not that it was slow but just that it could have been a little better i also will say sometimes a scene would just kind of fade to the end even though it didn't feel like it was the end of a scene like it would just drop once we had the information we needed it would be cut off and we'd just be done rather than like a kind of final wrapping up or a transition into the next scene because then you know the next scene would just start and it would was it a different day, different people, like, it just, once you got the information you needed, you kind of moved on, and so I think that was another issue I had and why it didn't flow, um, but I will say I loved the romance, the characters were pretty good, I liked them, um, but the romance was probably one of the best parts, and that was just saying, and that says a lot considering the romance got really confusing at the end, yeah, the romance got confusing, but because you know there's a lot of back and forth and it wasn't necessarily a love triangle in the traditional sense like i didn't hate that per se but it was just a little weird in my opinion but again still a four star i still highly recommend this book just because i had these few issues with it doesn't mean that it's not a good book or i think other people won't enjoy it like i still very much recommend it just i was expecting it to be a five star read and it wasn't, but it's a four star read, which is still very good. I also read volumes six through 11 of Silver Spoon. I am currently holding up volume 15 because I have uh, volumes 12, 13, 14, 15 of this, and that this is the end. Like once I finish the batch that I have, I have finished this manga, which is awesome. It'll be the first manga I have ever finished. I am borrowing them from a friend. so. Yes, I read six more volumes of Silver Spoon. It's wonderful. Still kind of waiting for the big thing to happen, like the big realization that the main character is supposed to have, but I also know I'm almost there, so it will happen at some point. But it's still a fun story and beautiful to read. I think the volumes have gotten better, and I like them a lot. So now we get to move on to all the books that I read over audio, and that was a lot. Uh, I read A Crystal of Time by Soman Chainani. This is book number five in the School for Good and Evil series. There are six books, um, unless you divide them up between the two trilogies that they are, then it's book two in the Camelot years, and I rated it 3.5 out of five stars. I thought it was very long, and it could have been split up, and it would have been a little more enjoyable, um, and then we would have been able, I mean, the scenes were very much delved into as they should be but like I don't know I think it would have just been easier to go through as two separate books and there was even a natural stopping point where I was like is this the end of the book because I would be very happy it makes perfect sense you know it seems like the end of the book and it wasn't it was only like halfway through the book so by the fact that there was that lull I kind of wish that had been split up However, I will say I do not think that anything needed to be shorter. I liked everything that was there. I loved, there was a POV change with a new character and I loved that they did that. I'm not gonna spoil anything obviously, but I'll just say there, there was that little thing there. 
I really like the continued exploration of the world. Like normally when you get to book five, you feel like either you've explored the world completely and now you're just trying to solve the plot or the world is just never ending and you kind of get sick and tired and you want to just move forward with the plot. But in this book, I did not feel either of those things. I liked that we were still exploring because we didn't explore something new like in the world every book. So I like that it's a little more spread out and it still makes sense and it kind of ties back to things that were earlier in the book so it's not just out of the blue. But yeah, I really much enjoyed the continued exploration. The character growth was fair because it, it was acknowledged that it needs to be there but it wasn't just like an immediate growth like we get with a lot of books which is good because that's not necessarily how humans grow in our character. But I'm also just ready for the growth to be done. Like, again, we're on book five. I'm ready for this boy to be grown as a human being. But I've also found that it was starting to get kind of boring and repetitive. Like, especially with the character Sophie, the continued doubt of her and the continue of will she, won't she. Like, it's book five and this has been a plot point in every single book. So the fifth time... I'm getting a little, a little bored, and I mentioned this when I talked about reading the fourth book where I was like, I'm not bored with this, but if it happens again, I'm gonna be annoyed. It happened again, so I'm a little annoyed. So, you know, like, it was long, but it was good, but it didn't feel very unique, and I'm just kind of ready, and there was just so much happening um, that I think some of it could have just been taken out, but, I mean, not really, so... Yeah, that review did not make a lot of sense, but those are my feelings. Sometimes my feelings don't make sense. Next up, I read The Late of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller, and this I also gave 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved it. It follows our main character, who is a bladesmith, but she also has anxiety, and she ends up creating this weapon, The Late of Secrets, that's way too powerful for this warlord who wants it, so she's like... <laughs> no, we're gonna run away. So she takes her sister and they meet up with a couple other people and they kind of run away with the sword to make sure that the evil warlord doesn't get it. And I, I also have anxiety. And to read a fantasy book with a main character that has anxiety was so nice and refreshing. Like, I just could not believe it. It made me so happy it made me feel seen it made me feel like i can still be a main character of my own story even though i have anxiety even though i have no idea how to talk to people and i rerun scenarios in my head of how it could have been better and how i messed up and like i was i was really able to relate to the main character and everybody's anxiety is different and there were a few areas where i was like okay i don't quite relate to that but i understand like that is still a struggle <laughs> so I very much enjoyed the characters and I liked her sister and the love interest and like I like how all that panned out. It is the first book in a duology. Master of Iron is coming out this summer and I'm very excited to pick that up. I loved the magic system, how it all works. Magic is outlawed but she has it so like oops. And just like what she does with the blades and family and oh, I, I very much loved this book and I very much recommend it. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about is The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. Um, this is a 1950s historical fiction taking place in Jaipur, India, and I rated it 3.5 out of 5 stars. I liked it. Again, it's a little more slice of life, kind of, <laughs> I'm using these manga terms, but um, for this historical fiction, I was really excited to read it. It was not like anything I have read before, but just know that there are some triggers going into it, specifically abortion and things of that nature. So just if you're interested in it, just know that that is a thing and be cautious. It really it kind of reminded me a little bit of Call the Midwife, which is a TV show that I watch with my mom and we both adore and my aunt adores it. So Call the Midwife is about midwifery in the 1950s, but in England. Um, so it was really fun to read about the same time period, but in India. It was just so much fun. It's a little slow. It's very interesting, and I was very fascinated to read it, but it was very slow moving. And 
there were some interesting family dynamics in there and I loved the woman empowerment in it too where she is a working woman and she's going to build herself the house of her dreams that she wants so I really admired that aspect of it and especially because it was probably not easy in those times to be a non-married independent woman it was just a beautiful story it was well written and beautiful even if it was slow and I didn't feel like a lot of things were really happening um, it took me a while to adjust to the cast just because there were quite a few cast members a lot of characters and that would just kind of pop in here and there but in the end I was very like happy that I read it and it was it was a good book so I obviously have not talked about 21 books but the thing is, is that all the rest of the books that I read in May are my Disney Twisted Tales because I am currently filming that vlog. I'm almost done. I'm on the last book. It's super exciting. Um, so I'm not going to talk about those books here, especially because I've read so many books that this video is going to be ridiculously long if I did talk about all of them. But I will talk about all of them in the vlog. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified because that vlog will be going up fairly soon, hopefully in the next week or two, depending on how long it takes me to read the final book, um, but I do have all of them. And I had read some before the vlog, so, but I will talk about all of them in the vlog. So like I said, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that, otherwise give this video a like, a thumbs up if you liked it, comment down below if you read any of these books or what your favorite book was in May that you read. Um, I have bookish social medias linked down below that you can follow me there and keep up to date with me a little bit more. And I think that is everything. So until I see you all in the next video, I wish you happy reading.